Hey guys and welcome to a very interesting video and also in this video I have with me my star guest Volvo Christian in front of a smart and I'm in front of a Volvo does yeah. that make me Volvo Chris and you <laughs> smart, smart Christian? Christian there's something wrong here <laughs> <laughs> Guys, before we set off, me and Christian and my friend Tony, we actually have a podcast on the Norwegian channel about electric cars. So I'm going to link it down below. I would really highly recommend you guys to check it out because there Christian is the special superstar special guest. Special star guest. As in my videos. Oh yeah. So with that plug out of the way, why are we comparing these two cars today, Christian? Because they are, as they say, same but different. Ooh. Both built on the same platform, the SEA, developed by Geely themselves. Same platform, same powertrain, and I thought it was also same battery, but this one has a slightly smaller battery. So Wait. do you want to give us the specs on the battery on that? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if this, is this the twin version? This is the twin, so this has okay. 69 kilowatt hours gross and yeah. 64 kilowatt hours usable. Yeah, and this one apparently has 66 gross and 62 usable. Okay, But beside that, it's basically the same car in different costume. This is Volvo's version and this is Mercedes and Geely's uh, joint version in the smart hashtag one. So what's interesting is there's actually a third sibling to yes. this family, which we you test driven, yes. I made a video on, and that is the Zeker X. So Geely is a Chinese auto manufacturer that own most of Volvo. Mm -hmm. Zeker is a brand they started, but Smart is owned by Mercedes. Do you yeah, know the story about this one? This is 50% Mercedes and 50% Geely. So Geely has done the development of the platform and Mercedes has done like exterior, interior design. Uh, that is at least what I n have heard. It's like 50-50 joint. Uh, yes, a joint venture. Yeah. So there's no Geely ownership in Smart, if I'm not mistaken, but this car is just a joint venture yeah. but there's Geely in mercedes Geely owns some parts of Mercedes. oh i did not know that i didn't so, know that okay yeah. that's cool so yeah it's the same but uh, different completely different approaches but they're also priced very very similar yeah if you go all in with the ex30 twin performance ultra it's like 520 and if you go for the brabus version on this one it's like 540. yeah norwegian kroner so yeah. about 50,000 euros for this and about 51, 52,000 yeah. euros it's for like that. It's like 20,000 so, Norwegian Kronos in difference. Yeah. So in this video, we're going to go through the exterior. We're going to talk about which we like the most. Mm -hmm. We're going to look at the interior and then we're going to take them both on a test drive. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to voice my opinion on which I think is mm -hmm. the best. I've driven this uh, previously, very short uh, at the launch in Norway. And you've driven both yeah, of driven these both. now extensively. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, extensively. that's today's video, guys. Yeah. This video is sponsored by Kempower. Kempower manufactures some of the most unique and best DC fast chargers on the market. Their satellite chargers offers flexibility and a user experience like no other. As a user, you don't have to think about what speed your car can charge at and then choose a charger that matches that speed. Kempower satellites with their load balancing system does all of this for you. All you have to do is connect and let Kempower do the rest. A huge thanks to Kempower for sponsoring this video. What do you think about the exterior of the smart hashtag one? It's so hip and cool. Hashtag. <laughs> uh, it's uh, acquired taste. Acquired taste? Uh, it's, uh, yeah. Uh, especially if you go for the black one with the red roofline. I got a strong Kia Soul vibe going on. I, I think the color combo is nice. We've, yeah. I think this car was clean maybe an hour ago, but we've had like yeah. sudden rainfall. So if we didn't have the Volvo here today, mm. I think this isn't that bad looking. It, it's very round and bulbous. Yeah. Looks a little bit like, you know, a, a bar of soap. Interesting. It's, it's okay, we're gonna yeah. put the specs on the screen now because this is actually a little bit bigger. It has a smaller yeah. battery pack, but exterior dimensions are a little bigger than the EX30, right? Yeah, this is like 427 versus 423. So we yeah. have four centimeters longer. But the biggest difference are actually the wheelbase. Yeah, Here we have yeah. a 10 centimeters yeah. uh, increase. And I think so we'll see that when once we look at the interior. Yeah. There's much smaller overhangs, both front yeah. and rear. But um, it's yeah. also a, a lot taller, right? The Volvo is like 155 centimeters tall, and this yeah, is... and this is like 163, so yeah. slightly taller. 
Uh, it actually has roof rails, right? This yeah. is, it gives it a little bit of like, like an SUV vibe. Yeah, because you can't get the rails on the uh, 30. No. So if you want a roof box, you have to mount it in the, um, just the pillar or the column here. But here you have rails. But, but I think it's overall an attractive design. But yeah. if you really want to look at a really attractive design, I think we got to look at the Volvo now. Now, yeah. this is <laughs> a lot better. A lot better. Do you agree? Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Much more handsome uh, exterior and cool looking. I mean, it's, it's, it's so funny because they're about the same size. This is, as we said, a little bit lower, shorter, yeah. but it just feels so much more compact mm. and sporty. And compared to the round and bulbous, you know, smart hashtag one, this is so, uh, you know, square and with nice creases and yeah. lines. It, it's, it's really simple like Scandinavian, but at the same time, it's it's really interesting. Standing here, just looking down at the hood, all of these creases and crests and lines. I think Volvo have done an excellent job with yeah, this. Yeah, definitely. Design. When you mention creases and lines, yeah. just this curvature yeah. in the door side, really, really nice. Compared and to and the, they're everywhere, so it's, yeah. it's so interesting because like this car looks so simple, mm. like in photos and in pictures, but there's so much more to the like this section here. Look at this. Yeah. Like is th this thing. like this this uh, line that goes here. I haven't seen that before. And this is this vapor gray. Yeah, vapor gray. With the 20 inch wheels. Yeah, um, yeah, 20. Yeah, these are 20s. 20. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And like the front light design, like the new uh, Thorshammer LED lights and also the rear lights. It's 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 really really attractive and good looking, but. The interior, this is a lot shorter. This yeah. is 10 centimeters shorter, as we said. We're going to take a look at that in a second. But there's one thing or two things I don't like about this okay. car. I, I think the design is almost perfect, yeah. but it's the chrome bit on the back, the Volvo lettering. Yeah. It just looks completely out of place because this car is like black, gray, black, gray, black, gray, and then you have those chrome letterings. It just looks yeah, yes, yeah. weird. Yeah, some chrome elements, but... And also in the front also. Yeah. But if you black that out and black this out, this oh. would be like the perfect design. Yeah, uh, hands, uh, hands down. I, much better than the Smart Hashtag one. And I also prefer these grab handles. Yeah. Proper grab Proper. handles, not this nonsense, but this thing popping, po poking in and out. Just, just old fashioned things, even, but it has frameless mirrors. Yeah, so, yeah. these are patented, patented frameless pole mirrors. Stuff. Yeah, from, you can't get that. Yeah. So there's things I really appreciate yeah. with the EX30 exterior. But overall, it looks much more handsome, in my opinion. Now, this is very different to the car or the cars I've been spending a few mm. weeks in now, the EX30s. This is a completely different yeah. design. And I think this is very interesting because the exteriors are very different, the interiors are very different, and people are so afraid that when electric cars now are gonna share the same platform mm. and there, there's gonna be you know the, the different versions of the same thing. And I think it's very clear that these two cars are very yeah, different. completely different. And we're talking about like entry level price point. Like yeah. this is where there's the least budget. And why does that keep uh, I popping don't know. up? Okay, we know. can talk about that later, yeah. but what do you think about this interior? Just Overall, it feels much more premium. Everything you touch, the thicker steering wheel. And I, I kind of like this center console that it, you're more cocooned in instead mm -hmm. of this very open center console area. Mm -hmm. I kind of like to be more bundled up in my little uh, area here. We also have this horizontal screen that I prefer. Yeah. Driver display, head-up display. You're, you're at home now. This I'm is, at these home. are the things you've been complaining about. Definitely. You've been complaining about the 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 uh, vertical screen yeah. in the EX30, the lack of a head-up display, mm. the lack of a driver display, and here this is just the the car for Christian. Yeah, and you have physical buttons on the steering wheel. Yeah, uh, that's a nice. I can't thing. understand nice why Volvo put in that capacitive shit. This is. It's, it's not capacitive. It's not. <laughs> yeah, that stupid fox. Yeah, it's it's no. It's it's it's, it's a touch it's panel. Kinda, yeah, it's touch but it's panel. not it's not it's not capacitive. You yeah, but you can hold over. You you can just hold over and and the car knows a lot. It will show you what you are. Well, I, I don't think it's gonna be. It's, it has to be capacitive. No, I don't think so. Oh no, you have to touch it. But there you, have to, you have to press it. But if you just hold your your finger over, uh, it the, does. Yeah? I haven't I haven't seen that. But okay. okay. Yeah. Either way. Yeah. 
I, I, I much prefer this uh, interior over the EX30. So I understand what you're saying, but I yeah. actually think this is like the, the grade of materials here are lower. Yeah. I mean, it's a different design, but like this leather here, this faux leather feels nasty. These yeah. stocks, stocks look oh, the, really bad. The stocks are all like, bad. Like this, is, is this supposed to be like that? That feels yeah. unfinished. No, don't complain. Don't complain. This is good shit, man. This is good shit. And the white looks really tacky yeah. in my the, opinion. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> the white plastic, uh, I'm not sure. but. The seats are good. Yeah, and the seats are nice. Yeah, and there's a lot of room here. I mean, yeah. I haven't adjusted this seat, but th this you that you know extra yeah. height in the yeah. car is, is felt in the the headroom. But yeah. let's jump into the back because yeah. I think that's where we're going to see a big difference. Yeah. <sighs> right away, this feels so much more spacious mm -hmm. than anything I've felt in any EX30. So you're sitting in just a normal seating yeah. position, right? I got plenty of room here. And uh, so you can actually adjust the rear seats here. How do you do that? There's a lever. There's a somewhere? grab handle on the. Under? Yeah, just pull. Look at that. Oh, look at that. It's like 10 centimeters at least. Yeah, that's great. That is great. Yeah. The X30 should have had this. I mean, there's so much more room yeah. here. I mean, if I was behind you or myself here in the rear of the EX30, I would be touching knees. Mm. Go check out my review on that because I would be touching knees. And also, headroom is, is really nice. I mean, this is a spacious rear seat. I am 178 centimeters or, or five foot uh, 10, and there's a lot of room here. This is a comfortable rear seat. And also yeah. a thing I didn't uh, talk about in the front, this is actually, is leather. this leather? Yeah. Or is this like artificial leather? It says leather on the smart web page. Yeah, because this like feels a lot more yeah. luxurious mm. than the, the Volvo EX30, which you can only have with a Nordico mm. or, or fabric yeah. or, or wool blend. Though. Definitely. And you also have an armrest. You I don't noticed. have that in the X30? No. Okay, so let's hop into the rear so, of the uh, X30 first then yeah. to do a direct comparison. Okay, can you move your just <laughs> your back a little bit forward? Yeah. Okay, so right away, right away, I had to ask him to move the seat forward. Uh, <laughs> how, how much space do you have? Yeah. Well, are you comfortable uh, now? Yeah, yeah no, no, I'm good. So you're good now. Yeah. You're a little bit shorter than me, but if I was behind myself, yeah. like I, I would have been touching knees. But yeah. this is so you're about in the same position as you were in the smart. Yeah, yeah. And this is there's so much less room here, and then there's no, no adjustability in the seat in the smart. We didn't show that you can actually also do the the, the backrest. Back you can tilt the back. But here you can't do anything. No. And there's also no armrest. There's no armrest. <laughs> it's so stupid. That is dumb. Yeah. That but at dumb. least you have uh, rare window switches here on the center console. And then you have this, this, I mean, you yeah. don't have this in the smart. I mean, this is like if you want to drink soup or <laughs> you want to yeah. like, I don't know, I don't uh, know. I, something. Uh, something. Tell me in the comment section down below, guys, what we could use that, uh, uh, <laughs> that drawer for. But yeah, this just feels, I mean, there's still plenty of headroom, but it feels so much tighter yeah, much more in the rear here. Yeah. And I also think there's l less room for my feet here. Like this, just yeah, overall, maybe. Just yeah, overall less room yeah. in the rear. But let's hop into the front because I think the front is where this car redeems itself a little bit. On the surface, this looks a lot more simple yeah. than the smart Hashtag one. Hashtag. You have to do the hashtag hand signals. What the, okay, hashtag. Uh, you know, I'm from Fauna in Bergen, <laughs> so we do the F. And you're from uh, Osana. Oh, so from you Osana, the, so we, uh, yeah. You and Lars Weiler? Me and Lars. <laughs> Me and Lars. No, but se seriously, like, this doesn't look as flashy or as premium at first glance, but I actually, to be honest, this isn't my favorite. Like, I don't think this, this spec here is comparable because no. this is so much darker. But I think like the quality of the materials, just the, the, the build, the fit and finish is so much nicer. This feels, this doesn't, it doesn't look as premium no. in photos or in video, but I think it feels a lot more premium, like the steering wheel, the, the, the switches, the stocks. Yeah, the stocks feels better, but I, I wish the steering wheel was thicker. Well, and also, I, I don't like thick steering wheels. I don't like too thin, you know. But well, this you is... like BMWs and I drive Porsches, so that's the difference. Yeah. You like these, you like this. This iX2 like... is 
you, you got to feel that you're touching it, and especially in a performance car. You want to... This is too thin and too uh, slick. Well, well, Porsches don't have thick steering wheels. Ferraris don't have thick steering wheels. Lamborghinis don't Just have thick steering wheels. Just thicker than this. Not, 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 I think it's perfect. Uh, I uh, think it's perfect. Uh, but okay, the that's buttons, the uh, buttons are shit. You can you can the, agree the with me. The buttons, buttons are, are shit. shit. Yeah. But and, I like the I like the grab handle. This solid, yeah, much better than the smart. Yeah, yeah, and it also like the materials just feel yeah. nicer. It's, it's so the, the design here is like so next level. It's so simple, but it it looks so much more premium and classy than the mm. smart, in my opinion. But back to the buttons, they are so shit that yeah. Volvo have actually introduced, did you see that? Yeah. In the Model, in the Model 25. 25 yeah. <laughs> They've already yeah. done an upgrade. <laughs> but, I can't understand, the car has just reached uh, customers and already they say, okay, the buttons are shit, we're gonna make a new one. Well, that, that is a good thing. That's a good thing. You're listening yeah, but, to customer feedback. You know, me and you, we went to Luleå a few weeks yeah. ago to North Sweden to the big winter drive and we got to talk to the team behind mm. the EX30, right? And Anna, who is responsible for the, the software for the infotainment system, she got roasted by me, by you, mm. by other journalists from a lot of different countries because we're not happy with, with this. Yeah. Right? And there's room for improvements yeah. on the infotainment. So if yeah. you want to see a full tour of the infotainment system of this, check out my review. Yeah. And if you want to see it on the smart hashtag one, I'm going to link Christian's mm. review where he talks about that. We're not going to do that in this video. No. It would be too long. We can't cover everything. But like, I much prefer this interior actually. Which do you like the best? I prefer the smart. Yeah, so I have better taste than you. We established that. No, <laughs> but this is this is close, but it it falls short. It falls on its face with this. What I want in the Volvo, I want a head-up display. I want the screen to be flipped horizontally, and I want a better button layout or interaction. Mm. If you give me that, then maybe. Um, but there's there's just so many small elements. Yeah, that's in my opinion, better in a smart hashtag one. So that, that's interesting because I like the screen in this, yeah, the, the, configuration, this, yeah. this configuration. I don't like head-up displays, like a period. I'm not a fan of head-up displays. Most press cars mm. which have them, I actually turn it off. Yeah. And I don't mind this not having a driver display. So I think this is like, what, what we're talking yeah. about here is a lot of personal preference. Definitely. And I absolutely understand like why people would like a head-up display, mm. why you would like this uh, screen layout different or like uh, flipped on its side and why you would like a driver display. But mm. with that out of the way, do you agree that the design here is better and that like the, the perceived quality is higher in this? Or do you still like that interior better? In design, uh I still prefer the smart. It's more, it's more conservative. It's mm. more natural. This is, this is on the Tesla minimalistic mm. perspective. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm completely vibing with this, um, but design-wise, I think it looks pretty good, and it feels of, of quality. But it's just the functionality and the way you interact with. The, these uh, elements that I don't definitely uh, vibe with. Okay, yeah. I totally agree. So let's take them on the road, each yeah. of these, and talk about how they drive yeah. because thus far I'm still liking this mm. more than that, but I may change my mind yeah. after hopping Maybe. behind the steering wheel. Yeah. Next, we took both cars out for a test drive to talk about the driving experience. But unfortunately, we had some audio issues, so I'm not able to show what we actually filmed. But to sum it all up, this Smart is the more sporty one of the two with a more tightly set up suspension and sharper steering. Once on the way, it also felt quicker despite both cars having the exact same drivetrain and the Smart actually having a much slower 0 to 100 km an hour time. The Smart's taller body and bigger greenhouse also made it feel more like a bigger and more spacious car to drive. On the other hand, the Volvo feels more refined, more comfortable and more luxurious to drive. It just feels like a more polished and solid car, period. We both preferred the way the Volvo drove and especially the lower and nicer seating position. Overall, the Volvo offers a better balance between comfort and handling in our opinion. Again, when filming the conclusion, we had audio issues, so I'll do the summation for us both. 
Despite Christian's critique about the Volvo not having a driver display or a head-up display and him actually preferring the smart, much more roomy interior, it was hard for him to overlook the Volvo's beautiful exterior, great driving dynamics, and even with all its flaws, the Volvo's superior infotainment system. And we both have huge critiques on the Volvo's unfinished infotainment system, but that just speaks on how bad the smarts is. It's terrible, if you didn't get that. For me, the Volvo is better at everything except for rear seat legroom and cargo. The Smart isn't the bad car, but in this party, the Volvo is just better. <laughs>